in this video, I want to talk a little bit more about the travel spirograph. Now, it's right there. I've mentioned it in a previous video, and it's a small kit that comes with um, six wheel shapes, two short pens, and it comes with a pad of 24 pieces of white paper, um, which obviously would run out very quickly. And then you can replace that paper with regular 3x3 three three sticky notes. So this is about challenging yourself as an artist with such simple tools. I had thought at first, um, because this started for me after a seizure, I had thought that I wanted to do black and white designs on white or cream colored art paper and stay along the fine art type of look to my finished little spirograph. But I'm finding that it's actually um, a benefit in some ways to open the kit and use what they give you. Now, it's also limiting. So, I've been frustrated because I want to use just black ink and yet when I looked for um, post-it note refills, the white are harder to find and they're called um, super sticky and they're much more expensive. They're almost double the price of regular post-it notes. So I bought a package of, um, it's a total of 1,200 notes. Uh, I don't know how many pads, um, probably 12 pads of 100. But they come in four basic colors, blue, yellow, pink, and green. So as an artist, that really throws me because um, unless you're a pastel artist using colored or tinted papers, I've always used cream or white art paper. So now all of a sudden I'm dealing with a background that I can't really control or change. And this really is becoming an exercise in pushing yourself as an artist because of the limitations. Now, the six wheel shapes that come with it give you countless opportunities for designs. So the finished design almost takes a back step to the use of color. And Spirograph, the original set that I have, um, from 1967 came with four color pens, black, red, green, and blue. This set only comes with two colors, red and blue. Now these are closer to, they're like a rollerball pen, but the ink acts like a felt tip pen. So you have to be careful when you're doing designs that you don't hold the pen in place too long or you get a little bit of a blob. But I was very frustrated yesterday because I I feel that I want to use what comes with the set and see where I can take that. So that leaves me with red and blue. So there's a red and blue on a yellow background. And yet, immediately I'm thinking, well, wait a minute, doesn't that limit me to even the designs themselves always looking so similar? that where's the creativity in that so then that's red and blue on a blue background and my problem is I'm sitting here going you know as a fine artist when you sit down to draw or paint something you have an idea of what you're going to do in your head you're going to draw a cat you're going to draw a tree so you know what you're going to get with these even as you become familiar with what the different wheels do, what are those? They're not things. They're not recognizable things. They are designs. They are literally designs. So my first frustration was trying to interpret a design. Now, because I worked in abstracts, I wouldn't be surprised if all of a sudden... I put some kind of a uh, meaning to a certain design, but that's not happening at all. In other words, you know, I could say, gee, this kind of looks like um, a sea urchin, kind of. 
but it doesn't look like a sea urchin. In other words, I think because this is based in math, what you're going to get are designs. You're not going to get abstracts. You're not going to get um, an ability to interpret your work. It really is based in math, and it really is going to give you designs. So because of my almost 40 years of really pushing the limits of creativity, this is like full stop. This is a whole different way of looking at art. And it, it's... Yesterday, I was so frustrated, I was just sitting here looking at these going, what do these mean? You know, they have to mean something. And I think I'm finding out that they, they don't mean anything except that they are designs. So that is fine as a definition, and so now I have it defined like that, and I'm just making designs. But again, with fine art training, you you say, well, I would use this color here, I would use this color there, I need to get a shadow, I need to do this. None of that's involved here, and yet it, it is completely artistic. So this is artistic math design, and the use of color is completely different than free-form art of any kind. You have a pre-designed um, design, and even like this one, I kind of tried to wing it a little bit, and it's not that pleasing, is it? So some of these might mean grief or, you know, maybe they do mean emotions or just an expression, but they don't interpret into objects or things like um, people or places or animals or anything like that. And because I'm not doing this really to focus on one particular emotion, I'm using these as a way to just keep expressing myself even when I don't know what's bothering me. And if you, if I were writing in a journal, I would write down, say, a nightmare and then go back and read it and understand it. And what's missing here a little bit for me is I don't understand what I've done. All I've done is a design and I don't know why but it helps so it's both a positive because I feel better after I do them but it's also um, very disconcerting in some ways because the artist the thinking of the artist is a little bit removed out of this I can only push the envelope in certain ways and mainly because of the whole design of Spirograph, that's with color. Now, I had wanted to do black and white on white paper. I couldn't get the white sticky notes easily. I have four colors. So I decided I need some kind of a reference point um, for myself so that I know when I'm pushing boundaries. So what I did was I wrote down what I'm assigning these different papers to me. The background is what I really can't control here. So yellow is going to mean the earth. Blue is going to mean water. Pink is going to mean people. And green is going to mean plants. And if I use that as a reference point for the four colors, even if I just do them free, you know, as freehand as you can get if I just pick up a wheel and, and do whatever design I feel like doing. Afterward, I'll at least be able to put them in a category. So all the blue ones will have something to do with water. And what this means is that they're defined after you finish them. Normally, like I said, in art, if I want to draw a circle or a star or something, I would sit down and draw a circle and know that I was going to get a circle. And I can't do that really with this time with these because even if I set out to draw a specific design, 
the fact that it's only a design keeps it from applying to anything. So I found um, if I apply a definition to the colors of the paper, I can then apply the design to something. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Now, um, the larger spirograph set, I think, um, for me right now, there's too many opportunities with that, and in my particular case, I think that would get me a little bit more scattered, um, simply because I'm trying to redo my artistic thinking, I guess. I, I'm, these are fascinating to do. It's a simple little set. Anyone can do it. It's almost like the, the 39 or 40 years that I've been an artist need to be put on hold and I need to recreate how I approach things. And that is pushing the envelope. So for a whole day, I didn't do too many of these. I did one. And then when I finally could put a definition on the colors so that I have, like I said, a reference point then I know whether I like them or not. You see, that was the problem. You can do these all the time, and they might be pleasing in different colors, but when you're doing them more or less freehand, when you're not following the instructions in the book and you're just picking up the wheel and creating something, you need to know what you're creating or you know, the, the, you're not controlling your thinking and you're not really doing art, you're just moving your hand with a pen over a piece of paper. So I thought I would mention it. Another thing to mention is the the holes on this newer set are slightly larger. Almost all of my ballpoint pens fit in there. Like I said, these are a felt tip type pen and you have to be careful with them as far as getting blobs I've also checked the, the um, Spirograph websites that are available, and you can't really buy replacement short pens. Now, that's probably a marketing thing for the company. They figure when the ink runs out, you buy another one. They're only $10, so um, that would be what you would pay for two pens anyway. But if you don't want to do that, just buy another one. Um, these are BIC stick pens, regular BIC pens with crystal ink. There's 10 or 12 to a package, all different colors. They fit in there fine. Um, any of my other ballpoint pens fit in there fine. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to, I think, limit myself to red and blue. And this is an artistic exercise. So I'm going to have red and blue on each of four backgrounds. And at that point, I can determine more easily what I'm doing and what I'm coming up with. In a way, you can think of it as building a language. Art is the expression of your feelings or emotions or facts or, you know, whatever you're expressing. But if you don't have any parameters and, you, and you're just randomly making drawings, then you're not really expressing yourself, and that's what I was running into yesterday. So now that I've set the parameters of what the backgrounds mean, I can start building a language. It's fascinating, and it's um, after a few days of frustration of finding out that it's actually better to limit myself to whatever they give me in the set that has forced me to start building a language. And it's a whole different way for me to think about art. And it might be something you also want to try. Limiting yourself to what comes in the set and seeing how you define. Maybe, maybe you live somewhere where the only color background you can get is yellow or blue or white. You know, so then you'd have to determine what are you trying to say, and how are you going to say it?
It really is a fascinating um, new experiment for me in art. 